where do we think that 2015 white paper is going to take us, I guess, is the first question, isn't it? Um, well, I, I made the point today that I, I don't, in terms of the strategic environment, I don't think it'll be very different from the, the last paper. I, there are some major strategic changes that have occurred, the behaviour of Russia, the implosion in the Middle East, um, but uh, they're not the events that are going to s result in significant change of policy or in terms of capability development. Yeah. No, look, I think, I think that's right. I think those very big and interesting events like in Russia and the Middle East and so on uh, are important in themselves but not very significant for the way Australia thinks about its future defence capabilities. I guess my thought though would be that what's happening in Asia and particularly the whole transformation of the major power relations, that that is going to have a big effect on our strategic environment and that's probably the thing that we now need to be factoring into the way we think about our future defence uh, capabilities and, uh, and budgetary projections. Well, I'll just qualify that by saying it, it, it's interesting that um, you know, we're back in the Middle East and, yes, and yes. we may be increasing yeah. our forces yeah. in the Middle East. So it's also important to design the force for the, the, the task that you're going to have rather than the task that you might, you well, might have. Y yes, although I'd just uh, sort of turn that over. You know, we, we have been sending forces to the Middle East and achieving our strategic objectives in the Middle East, I would say. Um, by drawing on the capabilities we've developed essentially for the defence of Australia over you know, many decades now, and so going all the way back to the first Iraq war in 91 and the various things we've done in the Middle East since then, um, I don't think we've ever found ourselves in a position where we couldn't do what governments felt it needed to be able to do in order to achieve our strategic objectives in the Middle East from the forces we've developed for the defence of Australia. Whereas I think if Asia becomes more contested between major powers, we may find ourselves in a situation in which we can't do what governments think they'd want to be able to do. Well, uh, just not wanting to argue the point, but <laughs> but um, when you what you say may be true in a historical sense, but if you look at the the uh, air capability that we've sent this time, uh, it is a very modern capability, uh, self-supporting capability, in uh, in ways that Australia never had in terms of its own. It can carry its own equipment, yeah. it's modern in-air refuelers, yeah. modern command and control yeah. aircraft. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, and that's really a capability that has been developed because of the belief that we may well be find ourselves operating in an international force yeah. in yeah. issues such as this. Yeah. Yeah. No. So, but on Asia, yes, yeah. um, uh, I don't think there's... Um, There'll be much in the white paper that, um, well, I think I should qualify that. The white paper will certainly uh, certainly recognise that um, the, ter the, the territorial disputes that have, that have heated up in recent years. Uh, it will express concerns that um, of a nationalistic masculinity of China that is um, probably worrying will be as far as the language language will go. Yeah. Uh, having said all of that, um, I don't. In terms of response, I don't think it will lead to any significant change in policy yeah. or in capability. Yeah, yeah I, I suspect you're right. I think it, I think it probably should, but I don't. But I don't. But, but, but I doubt if it will. I mean, I guess the other interesting angle is what it says or what it implies, at least about Indonesia. We had Marty Natalagar on the panel with us. So he was obviously a very uh, fluent um, articulator of Indonesian views on these issues, but what do you, how do you think Indonesia is going to play into the way the white paper puts things? I can't, I can't see anything that's likely to be in the white paper that will be of any major concern to Indonesia. You know, uh, we are going to upgrade our patrol boats, uh, but there's no secret about that yeah. and they're really just replacing yeah. the ones that we have. We're, yeah. we're upgrading our, our um, uh, maritime surveillance aircraft, um, both to the P-8s yeah. and the probably the Triton unmanned yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, surveillance aircraft. Um, but um, there's not, there won't be anything new in what they're actually doing. They'll just be the modern way of conducting surveillance of our EEZ uh, area. No, I'm sure. I'm sure that's right. I think actually, in a sense, just because some other issues are looming larger now than they did. In a sense, Indonesia looms less large now 
um, than it used to, even though it's growing economically and uh, in the longer term, I guess, we'll have bigger military capabilities as well. But um, I, I think in the longer term, there's likely to be a closer convergence of Indonesian and Australian right. strategic perspectives. In a sense, the more contested the region becomes, the stronger the the, the, the issues that Australia and Indonesia have in common and the further we're, we're driven together. Um, and at least I hope that's what happens. Well, I, I agree. I, I, I think that's a good thing. And uh, it, was, it was interesting that Marty picked it up, yeah. that we should, we should think about ways in which we can help each other in terms of our security needs. And, and you know, we have done it in the past. You know, oh, even, yeah. in, even in my day, when yeah. I made the decision yeah. to re-engage Capacis, yeah. uh, in part because a capable Capacis was a security benefit to Australians yeah. who were then under threat of yeah. terrorist attack yeah. in Indonesia. Yeah. Um, it sort of demonstrated to me that we've, we've, yeah. there are, we, do, we do have common, face common threats, uh, and working together we can actually help each other, and I, I hope there's more of that in the future. Yeah, no, uh, no, that's right. I mean, often people look at the geographical uh, proximity between Australia and Indonesia is a source of tensions between the in the relationship, and in a sense that's kind of obviously right. But it also is a sense of, it, it contributes the, to the sense of converging strategic interests. Because we're next door neighbours, we both have an interest in the stability of the region which we share, and if there are threats to that, then that ought to be the basis for us to deepen that. Yeah. So uh, 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 an Indonesia that's succeeding, that's, that's yeah. growing in a healthy way, that standards of living are rising, uh, that um, is is something that's in our yeah. in our interests. It's in our interest economically, yeah. too, because yeah. we've we've hardly scratched the potential for economic uh, uh, common benefit. Yeah. So, you know, we've had some testy issues in in recent times, but I hope that um, they'll be overtaken by time and yeah. we'll return to the trajectory that I think we were on a little while ago.